If you have got an M1, M2 or even the newer M3 Mac and you are missing the ability to run Windows, don't worry, I've got you covered. We'll walk through an easy step-by-step -step process of running Windows on Mac and I'll give you my take on how Parallels perform on Apple's ARM-based Macs. Let's jump in. Before we dive into the installation, why would you use Parallels Desktop to run Windows on your Mac? With Apple Silicon chip, Apple removed the option of Bootcamp that used to be the best way to run Windows on a Mac. So Parallel is our way to go. It's one of the best ways to run Windows 11 on Apple Silicon Macs. I have been using it for a while and I must say performance has been great. With Parallels optimized for Apple Silicon chips, everything from running Windows apps to occasional gaming has been surprisingly smooth. Let's start with the installation of the Parallels desktop. Head over to the discount link in the description and download Parallel Desktop. I recommend testing it out with the trial version to see how it works and if it works for you before committing the full version. After installing the app, it will ask for a couple of folder permission, then sign in with your account and then activate the license. If you don't have a license, then you can use the trial period to test it out. After that, it will walk us through a simple process of installing Windows. Click on Install Windows and it will automatically do everything for us. It will download and install it. We don't have to do anything at all. It took me around 7 minutes to install the windows. After the windows is installed, you can start using it. You need to enter a license key for windows or if you have an insider build then you can use that too. Similarly, you can use other operating systems like Ubuntu. Now let's talk performance. In my experience, Parallel Desktop on Apple Silicon is incredibly smooth. Even though we are running windows on ARM, most apps work just fine. I have tested various programs from Microsoft Office to Autodesk, Revit, Adobe Photoshop and everything worked flawlessly. Now if you are into gaming, you can play some Windows games on your Mac too, but don't expect top tier performance. Casual and indie games run well, but more graphically intensive games might struggle, even if you have great spec. Like in Rocket League, you can expect 40 to 60 FPS, so please set your expectations accordingly. For productivity apps, it's almost as if you were running them natively on a Windows PC. The Seamless integration between Windows and macOS means you can copy and paste between both environments, drag and drop files, and even run Windows apps in coherence mode, which makes them look like macOS apps. As you are using a virtual machine, you must expect a slight dip in battery life as you are using a lot of resources, so it's quite obvious. You are running two systems in one machine. Surely you can do a lot with the settings. You will find all the norms and gears to tweak the settings the way you like. Though Parallel adjusts the settings automatically and I never felt the need to increase the resource allocation, but you can increase or decrease CPU, RAM, GPU or anything you like from the setting. One of the best features is that how well it integrates the macOS and Windows. You can run Windows apps directly from your macOS dock and files saved in your macOS environment can easily be accessed in Windows and vice versa. If you prefer Microsoft Office on Windows but prefer other macOS apps, this is incredibly convenient. As for pricing, Parallel Desktop isn't free but it's worth it if you need to run Windows on your Apple Silicon regularly. The plan starts for $100 per year for the standard edition and $120 per year for Pro edition. And if you want to, you can buy the standard edition for a $130 as a one-time purchase. However, I emailed them and they were able to provide me with a discount link. So make sure you go through the link in the description for added discount. The key difference between standard and Pro edition is the option for resources. Other than that, I don't see any major difference. So choose whatever suits you the best. However, that's it for today. Now, if you are looking for a way to recover your data, then this video will definitely help. And if you are looking for a way to clean your Mac, then there you go. Like, share, subscribe. Stay safe. Bye-bye.